Welcome back to Storytime with a Scientist. My name is Sammy Hadi, and today I'll be reading you a very interesting book called The Sun and the Moon by Carolyn Simani de Cristofano and illustrated by Taya Morley. Let's begin. What's that round yellow object shining in the sky? The sun, of course. And what's the other bright object up there? Did you say the moon? Then you were right. But sometimes the moon is harder to recognize. The sun is out in the day. It always has a circle. But the moon is different. Sometimes you see the moon in the daytime. Sometimes at night. Its shape seems to change. Wouldn't it be nice if you could go visit and explore the sun and the moon? But they are so far away. Well, we can imagine that trip. Ready? Blast off. Away we go. Up, 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 past rooftops, clouds, and airplanes. Look, down, down, down. There is Earth, fat and round. Wispy clouds whirl above blue oceans. White ice and land, gold, green, and tan. Can you find a spot where you live? Maybe. Linger a while and watch. See how Earth turns like a top? Different parts of Earth turn towards the sun and then turn away. The parts of Earth that are lit by the sun are in daytime. The parts of Earth that are in the shadow are in nighttime. We could gaze forever, but we're on a mission. Onwards. Hundreds of thousands of miles from home, we arrive at the ball-shaped moon. It's smaller than the Earth, but the same shape. A 3D sphere, round in all directions. Let's zoom to the daytime side of the moon for a good look. See those dark patches? Some people imagine that they were oceans, but moon seas are rocks. They formed long ago, when giant pools of lava cooled and hardened. Think of gooey chocolate sauce freezing on ice cream. Bumpy mountains and splotchy craters cover higher ground. What made them? Have you ever dropped a pebble into a puddle? Plop! Splatter! Water splashes out. Craters form like splashes. Way back in time, huge and small space rocks crashed into the moon. Smash, shatter, chunks and smithereens of broken moon scattered. They left holes with high edges, quick craters and instant mountains. The moon's craters, mountains and seas have barely changed in billions of years. That's because the moon is not like the Earth. There's not much to move moon dirt around. There's no flowing water, no air, wind, or weather. Scientists think frozen water is mixed with moon dirt, like dirty snow. There's no skating here. There's something else familiar on the moon. Stuff from Earth. There are robots sent recently by curious scientists. A space exploration robot, moon buggies, footprints, and even two golf balls. About 50 years ago, astronauts visited the moon and they left some things behind. People marveled at these lunar visits. After all, for thousands of years, people looked up at the moon, and finally, someone looked back. And now, goodbye moon, here we come sun. Astronauts have been to the moon, but nobody has ever visited the sun. Can you guess why? The sun is much, much further away from Earth. A three year trip instead of three days to the moon at your rocket speed. We're partway there, and look, now you can see that the sun is a sphere, like Earth and the moon, but this is all about that similar. You'll see the difference as you get closer. For example, the sun is humongous, 
you could pack approximately 9,600,000 Earths inside of it. Want to land? We can't. This blazing ball has no land to land on. That's because the sun is a star. Like the stars you see at night, only much, much, much closer. That's why it looks so much bigger and a lot brighter from, uh, than other stars, even from Earth. Like any star, the sun shines on its own. It is made of glowing, swirling gases, similar to fire. Imagine countless campfires combined with flickering flames and flying sparks. Remember how the moon pretty much stays the same all the time? The sun is so, so different. Just look at all the action. Sunspots skitter across the sun. Think of these dark spots as great big wild energy storms that last for weeks. How big? A single sunspot is about the size of the entire Earth. Oh my gosh, here's a huge explosion, a solar flare. Every explosion sends bits of the sun zooming off into space. Look at these giant long hoops of sun material. Their name is almost as long as they are. Ready? Solar prominences. Prominences. There's always something you cannot see. It's the sun's terrific heat. Parts of the sun are millions of degrees hotter than a volcano or a rocket blast. So why doesn't Earth melt? Earth does not melt because the sun is so far away from it. That protects Earth from getting too hot. Luckily though, the sun is not too far away. It is close enough to keep Earth warm and for plants to have enough sunlight to make food. The sun helps us live. Think about it. Even from 93 million miles away, Earth is connected to the sun. You don't really need an imaginary trip to explore the sun and the moon. Just keep looking up. Thank you so much for joining me today as I read this book. I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for more story time with a scientist. Mm -hmm.